Well, how do that, Jums? Does I, Captain of the Steves, and today, Jums, got some news for you. I want to go over the PlayStation blog that's behind me. That's actually written by Sean of the Murrays. Because there's something, there's a couple of things in here that I glossed over, but they could have tantalizing tidbits. So let's uh, jump on over to the Tinter Webs and let's have a better read, shall we, people? Okay, so yeah, I've got myself a lovely cup of tea with me as well on this lovely morning. I say lovely morning, it's freaking freezing here in the UK. I don't know about where you are in the world, but fudge and heck is it cold. Right, anyways, let's get on to this. So, this is to do with the Halloween update, the Cursed Expedition. Now, it started about almost two weeks ago now. We've only got like a few more days to run, about three days. So, you know, if you haven't run it, I have got a guide. I'll put a, I'll put a playlist link up there. You can go hit that up and watch how to do it. But anyway, can you stop the boundaries between realities from collapsing entirely? So they're collapsing no matter what we do by the sounds of things. But hello, our tiny... No Man's Sky team has a Halloween treat for PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5 and PlayStation VR players. Now, when he says our tiny No Man's Sky team, when we saw them go to the Game Awards the other year, they actually had a team there that was solely working on Light No Fire. They have split their studio in half. So when they say a tiny No Man's Sky team, that makes me wonder whether it's more than half now. Read into that what you will. I mean, the speculation completely on my part, but what do you think? Our last update saw players enjoying a nice chill time as we added fishing to No Man's Sky. Our next update couldn't be more different as we approach Halloween. We want to scare and surprise players. The Cursed is an unexpectedly creepy update for No Man's Sky. I mean, they have delivered in creepy updates previous years, but this Cursed update has got a certain vibe to it, a certain undertone that, yes, freaking lovely, with HGR Geiger type inspired UFO and Lovecraft inspired sort of alien visages. It's great. The Cursed is a weird and unsettling gameplay event where you fight, you'll fight to keep a grip on reality while hunted by visions and voices from another dimension. I mean, there's lots of messages that pop up on the screen at various intervals. One says, uh, where's Artemis or Artemis is gone, something along those lines, which is quite a nice nod to the lore of yesteryear. But anyways, taking place in a short twilight universe, a sort of Twilight Universe, the curse straddles the boundaries between one reality and the next. Here time can shift unexpectedly, spinning from day to night at vertigo inducing rate. Freaking darn nice! On planets we've had boundary failures for some time, and flux is around those boundary failures. I'm wondering whether the boundary failures are going to spin up and actually allow us access to these realms in an upcoming update. The Boundary Herald, a starship is your safe haven in this haunt, haunted universe. Our first, our first, first flying saucer is a gorgeous Geiger-esque coils of tubes and pipeworks and engines. If you don't know who Geiger is, he's the chap who designed Aliens for the film Alien and Aliens and Alien Freak with Ripley in, you know, all that sort of pipeworky sort of organic sort of look. And you can see that sort of stuff going on on here. It's not as trippy as Geiger. I just watched Alien Romulus. I will be doing a review of Alien, Alien Romulus, the movie, very soon. So if you like the idea of that, hit the bell. Cool. Players must protect themselves against the weakening of boundaries of reality. Your exosuit comes fitted with a specialized anomaly suppressor. Maintaining this is key to surviving while the universe begins to break down around you. Pretty like that. That's pretty cool. As players struggle to navigate the ha these haunted worlds, they may come face to face with ghostly beings that drift across the boundaries. Sometimes these spectral anomalies merely observe, and sometimes they can touch and become more hostile. These encounters provide players with new challenging enemies and boss battles at a scale not seen before in No Man's Sky. They are pretty cool as enemies. Now, what I would say is if you're encountering maybe the Vile Brood or a Mass Sentinel Horde, and then you've got these things coming at you as well, it can, can put up quite a bit of a challenge. 
So anyway, that's pretty darn cool. Travels will not have to access, will not have access to the hyperdrive technology, meaning no warping between star systems. Instead, interstellar travel travel requires careful planning and use of the ancient portal network. Yeah, there's like what four or five rendezvous points, and you get to each through different teleporters, and you reinitialize each time. It was very odd. Haunting voices leaking through from another dimension will provide guidance, information, strange blueprints, and a mystery. It's up to you to decide who these voices belong to, where they're coming from, and if they are to be trusted. I have the realm of glass, the water, all that sort of stuff, probably even the void mother. And it goes into what you're going to be getting and all that sort of stuff. The interesting bit is in this very last paragraph at the bottom. Our last update Aquarius brought fish into No Man's Sky and proved very popular for us. For us, 2024 continues to be one of our most popular years since launch. In the coming weeks, considering you know, this is about the cursed, so this is from the start of the cursed to now, we have several, several more surprises. Well, I only really know of one surprise, well, two actually. One is the PlayStation 5 Pro launch. That's one surprise. The next surprise is the reduxes you know rerunning the missions but even if i mean there's usually four missions so even if you put four in there so you know you got we've got playstation redux one two three and four that's five but they're saying several there's two more that i don't know about what could they be my guess would be cross save and also i'm thinking maybe this sort of shenanigans, these sort of beings might be coming into the verse permanently. You know, like how with Endurance, we had all the worm babies appear. And then in Liquidators, we had the vile broods appear. I think, and they carried over, they carried over into actual game. I think these guys are going to carry on over into actual game. They're too nice a model and too much programs gone into them and dev work's gone into them to just scrap them for an expedition. I think they're coming into the verse. I also think this visage is a hint at a new underwater race. I think if we are to get deeper planets and uh, deeper oceans, perhaps we're going to get some sort of new aquatic race that's perhaps you know, a little bit more inspired by Lovecraft, a little bit more like this, a little bit more like perhaps Tephus that we see on the side of the actual spatial anomaly. And that ties into the River of Styx and the Greek mythos is intact and kept. Yeah, so I think that kind of works quite nicely. Let me know what you think. Do you think we might end up seeing a new organic race that perhaps flies saucer-shaped ships? I mean, even inside of our own world in real life, a lot of UFO sightings happen at sea. So who's to say? Could be quite an interesting one. Anyway, I've done some polls to find out what people might think might be happening over the next few weeks to try and get a gauge whether they think something special might happen around the 7th of November. 7th of November, firstly, the expedition ends on that day. Secondly, the last of the fireworks that we have right now unlocks and completes. And then thirdly, we've got the PlayStation 5 Pro launch. And we already know that No Man's Sky is coming out for that. So I asked, what do you think that might mean for the rest of us? 25% say nothing. When it went to other platforms, not much happened. You know, Nintendo Switch and maybe PlayStation VR and so forth and so on. Or Mac even. But this is going to a platform that's quite high spec. So 40% of people says a small update, maybe some optimization and graphics updates. Yes, 40% of people think that. I think that's very, very likely that some of that optimization for PlayStation 5 is going to be carried over to previous incarnations, or at least to the next gen platforms like the Series X or um, the Series S or the PlayStation 5 base. Big update, cloud saves, start of Redux and new featured bases. The new featured bases haven't been rotated out for a little while, so that's why I stuck that in there. Redux has happened this sort of time every year or have for the last three to four years. So that could be on the cards. It's highly freaking likely. So both of those are likely. The cloud saves, we've seen lots of mention inside of the game files that something is happening around cloud saves. Now at the moment on PlayStation 5, I can't see bases on big hub areas. If I go to the, you know, the galactic hub where there's loads of bases, 
Don't see anything there. If I go to my Halloween event, where I know bases have recently been uploaded, nothing. Go there on my P PC, bases everywhere. So I think something is happening cross server, at least for PlayStation 5 and maybe the PlayStation 5 Pro. Want to see poll results? I think just a PlayStation 5 release, 15%. We've also got 12 comments here. I just sort of, you know. Pretty sure that Bomber Boy or someone suggested that the Expedition Redux. Yes, there is. I've done a video, in fact, there, which goes into what those Reduxes might be, when they're going to start, when they're going to end, all that sort of stuff, all the leaks from that Bomber Boy. So that's already been covered. There's Scammer Child. Yes. Daniel King. And we've got, we've got one from one Grunt there as well. And Jolin. Slutamondo chaps. Larry White as well. There you go. I'll just scroll a little bit slower anyway. Cool. Daniel King says it's been three months now since Wells Part 1. You'd think by now we would have got Wells Part 2 since they did post a world emoji three times. I don't think we're waiting any longer than this. Well, yeah and no. Um, we've already had a big summer update. And Hello Games tends to do one big update a year and littler updates. So, I don't know. I think we may have had our big update for the year. Uh, there is an ARG running. There's like, what, four parts to it. We've had three parts. We haven't had the conclusion part. I think if they wanted to add in parts for the Void Mother, going into the Realm of Glass, adding in those new enemies and making them more canon and a little bit of story, they could deliver in ARG part four as one of those several surprises happening over the next several weeks or whatever. Why even waste money on it? Just rip off a warning to anyone thinking about getting into it. You're better off getting a PC. Why do you think Microsoft has been so quiet? Ah, that's on the PlayStation D5 Pro. Yeah, no, fair enough. Cool, yeah. Well, there we go. That's my first poll. I went over and I did another post over here. And this is just a post about information. This de decal has been spotted on the new ship. Some think it might be a date. There you go. I'll show you the decal first. This is the decal right here. Pretty darn freaking odd, huh? But that's definitely a 24 at the end. But what about the rest? You know? Anyway, some think it might be a date. 7th of the 11th, 2024. I kind of see that. And this links to the PlayStation 5 Pro. But I also see 7HW24. Google, I'll put it into Google. It comes up with golf clubs of all things. But I've got another post about that in a moment. And AI gives me nothing to go with on the W, uh, the HW. For me, I think I might. it might mean Halloween and the 7th is the end date um, of the expedition. And the last day you can get the ship for now. And yeah, it's credit to that bomber boy and over at Oxarp for finding this inside of the actual game files. Lovely jubbly. What are your thoughts? Sound off in the comments. So if we pop on over to that Twitter post anyway. There we go. That's, that's exactly what they've managed to find in there. Nice and crisp image there. I'm scrolling down, there's a few different people that have sounded off to say what they think it might be. With the Easter eggs and so forth and so on. But I think it is... Over here in the UK, we have car registration number plates, which look fairly similar in sort of configuration. I think it is just a nod that it was Halloween. But I've had some interesting comments on this. Now that one makes sense. It could just be HW24, Halloween 2024. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm thinking. Not a seven, just a fancy H&W for Halloween 2024. Fair enough. There was one that says, I actually make these for a job. So let's have a look. Where, where was it? Which was quite interesting. Oh, I don't know where it's gone. There was one that says, yeah, I actually do this for a job. And I was like, OK, in the industry, do they have a name for these things or something? Oh, well, I can't see it. Oh, here we go. I think that was it. Oh, I make these as a job. There you go. In the second line. So they've actually put 7 H U L U W -L, L E for Halloween 7 11 2024. That kind of plays into it. And I can see how that's done by uh, taking different tangents of it and putting them up. Yeah. Do they have a name for these things? Okay. And he hasn't actually replied as yet. But yeah. Anyways, that's an interesting one. I think it is just Halloween. I think it is just marking out that it's Halloween. It could be something more, but I don't know what. 
Anyways, when you actually put into Google 7HW24, it comes back with some golf clubs made by a Tory Lopez. And when you look at this, there's wing there, wing there, cockpit here. You know, it, it does look like the makeup of these new saucer shaped ships. Wing, wing, cockpit. Yeah, who freaking knows? <laughs> or it could be that they're going to add golf in. I mean, why not? They've gone and given us fishing, haven't they? And they've, cooking as well. Cooking, fishing. Why not add in golf? Let us make our own mini golf courses at our bases. I jest, but it could happen. You know what I mean? But anyway, people. That's pretty much everything I've got for you when it comes to the PlayStation blog by Sean of the Murrays. I've got my lovely cup of tea on the go here. So this is my own brew of tea in my own merch mug. Yeah, if you, if you want to join me in drinking my own tea in my own merch sort of mug, yeah, you can get both in my video description. It's a lovely English brew, by the way, people. Lovely English brew. Yeah. Good, good Christmas gift idea, actually, isn't it? Yeah. Anyway, until next time, salute to Mondo. Goodbye, goodbye, and goodbye again.